Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel. It's Amy and today we're going to be doing a foundation base tutorial. And this is just going to be like what I have done whenever I already get on camera because I kind of have mentioned it several times. So I wanted to make this video so you guys could have a reference video, you know, if ever you did want it and you wanted to go back and watch that video and see how whatever was done to begin with is done. So obviously I'm completely barefaced right now. No, <laughs> my face is completely bare. And um, the only thing I do have on is my First Aid Beauty Coconut Priming Moisturizer Smoothie, I think is what it's called. It's a name like this long for no reason. Um, but in saying that, I really, really love that primer because it doesn't feel like a primer. It's not like silicone-y like a primer. It's just very moisturizing. And I like to really concentrate it in this area and like you're down here in this area just because I do tend to get dry right there for whatever reason that's just my skin type um, but today I'm gonna show you guys these are my typical go-to foundations it's gonna be either the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in Warm Nude that is pretty much my day-to-day -day foundation that I like to wear because it's pretty light and it's buildable and it's honestly it's relatively cheap so I think I spend like probably an average of seven or eight dollars on this. So it's really good for the pocketbook. My next one that I wear is the Supergoop CC Cream. This is in light medium. I really like this. I like wearing this on days that I don't really want to wear a lot of makeup. If I'm just wearing a base because I don't want to go out like this, if I have some redness or some darkness under my eyes and I really just need some kind of coverage, I like wearing this. It's a good coverage, but it's also it's, it's skin like the only thing I don't like about this is it does have a lot of sunscreen in it which is good but it also kind of causes a little bit of flashback in photos I've noticed but not like not a horrible amount but you can kind of tell it just kind of has like a slight white cast to it which I don't love um, but and also this one is pretty expensive for a CC cream I feel like it was probably like close to $40 for this I don't know, it was kind of expensive for a CC cream. This is my most favorite. This is the Too Faced Born This Way Foundation. This is in the shade Warm Nude. And this is, I think, $39. Um, this is my favorite one. This is a medium to full coverage foundation. You can definitely build it if you want to build it. This is what I like to wear, not so much on a day-to-day -day basis, but when I'm definitely going to be being photographed or if I'm going somewhere that I want to be sure I'm looking, you know, flawless or whatever, I'm definitely going to wear that one. My next one that I like is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place. And this is in the color 2W2 Rattan. As you can tell, these are all warm based because I do have a warm skin tone. And if you're not sure whether your skin tone is warm or cool or neutral, they have all, th all kinds of things you can do online like... Let me fix this. Like you can, you know, check your veins and see, you know, do they look blue or do they look green or can you tell or whatever. Or hold a white piece of paper to your face and what is, you know, all that kind of stuff. Just go online and do your little Google and, you know, it'll tell you some ways that you can help find out. But I do have a lot of green veins in my skin. But in some places I have where you can very visibly see that they're, they're bluish in tint. But what I just go off of is my past photographs. Do I look good in beige tones when I wore a beige foundation? Do I look good in cool tones when I wore a cool foundation? Did I look good in warm? And so basically when I went and looked back in photographs, what was most flattering for me more than neutral or cool was warm because I am. I do have warm undertones. Um, but that's something you definitely is that's really important to figure out. The next step, and so this is going to be a little chatty because I'm trying to give you a thorough understanding of like what's good and what's not good to do. Another step after you moisturize, it's always a good idea to moisturize before you lay foundation on because especially even if you have oily skin, you really need to moisturize certain areas and it just makes the application process a lot smoother and a lot nicer. It just generally looks better. So you need to use a moisturizer that's suitable for you. If you have oily skin, I would use a gel moisturizer because I have oily skin and so I can't really use a cream kind of moisturizer except under my eyes, like, you know, uh, at nighttime or something. 
but I would never use it on the rest of my face because it's way too oily for me. But you definitely want to use some kind of, some type of moisturizer. So if you have oily skin, I would use a gel. If you have dry skin, a cream. If you have in between, you know where you get oily at. Just, you know what to do. Just put it in certain areas where you need it. Definitely put some kind of cream on your eyes because if you have like crepey under eyelids, which I've kind of had these lines. I have some lines under my eyes that can't super see them right now um, but I've had them since I was a child so it's not necessarily something from age but you definitely get them with age but I have always had like one or two lines under my eyes it's just the way my eyes are for some reason so moisturize first the next step you could do is either go straight from that to foundation or if you want luminosity or if you want mattifying you would do you know a mattifying primer or you could blot some people like to blot with powder first I don't, I've never tried that but you could do what I'm about to do which is use the Stila One Step Bronze Skin Tone Illuminating Bronzing Serum and this is just a bronzer that's a primer um, I don't like to use this all over my whole face and you'll see why in a second it's really moussey when it comes out I really only like to put it in areas where I would typically bronze and it's really you see how dark that is um, it's really just for bronzing And so I'm going to put a little in my cheek area right here. It's just going to give some depth to the skin and some luminosity. So you can either go this route with something like this or another thing I like to do that's a favorite if I'm really wanting some luminous skin, something glowy that day, I'll use the Iconic Illuminator Drops just like I just did and put that on the high parts of my face right here, right there. Um, another one is the Max Strobe Cream. That's a really good one. And the Smashbox Radiance. I've used all of those and all of those I would have to recommend as to be, you know, my top favorites. Now, the next step would be, these are all optional. All of these steps are optional. The next step would be if you have pores, like I have pores, um, using a primer to set in those pores. I have the Cover FX Blurring Primer here. And I have the Professional, I couldn't find my regular size when I found this travel size I had from something um, but my tall tube I don't know where it is um, this is just the professional professional you've seen it before and it just looks like that they both look pretty much the same the cover effects one is a little darker and I'll show you the way I like to use this you take a little amount like this and on the area that you have pores okay what I like to do to actually fill that area I don't have a lot right here but I just do like to put it right there and I have some in my chin area so what I like to do is rub that on the area that's problematic for pores and then I like to literally press that product into my skin so you're literally like filling the pores just like that so everywhere you placed it after you've rubbed it in give it a little push so it'll really fill them just like that and as always a good tip to remember after you have moisturized let that moisturizer soak in your skin for a minute before you go straight on popping other products on that's why I didn't go ahead and have my moisturizer on because I needed it to sit in my skin for a minute to really mesh with my own skin and then I like to wait just a moment after doing that to really get that in there also now the next thing I'm going to show you guys is today I think I'm just gonna for the sake of this being more affordable using my fit me foundation now for the I forgot to mention for the blurring where is it at? the blurring primer and the professional one those are pretty expensive I really don't know a dupe for those but if I do ever find one I will definitely let you guys know but I don't know of a dupe for that right now or um, this also I want to say was like twenty dollars for this hmm I'm trying to think if there's a cheaper one off the top of my head any cream illuminator may work I may have to go you know do some shopping for that now I'm gonna show you guys what I like to do which the only thing I don't like about this is that it doesn't have a pump so you kind of have to put a little on your hand or either on some type of little palette board or whatever you may have something clean 
and do it. And that's the other thing. When you are applying your product, you can even use your hands, but whenever you're applying your product, please have clean hands. Your hands have so much bacteria on them. If you already have acne prone skin, just wash your hands first. I'm just going to be using a beauty blender that's already wet. I just washed this yesterday, but I used it yesterday, so it has foundation on it. And I'm going to just tap. Now, I'm gonna, the areas that I need more coverage, I'm going to just place more product. So right here, I get some like hormonal redness. Around my nose, I have redness. A lot of our redness as women comes from hormonal issues which sucks because <laughs> we can't do anything about it and do not neglect underneath because my face is already darker I mean sorry my face is already lighter than my rest of my body because I sunblocked the heck out of my face just make sure you get something that matches your skin tone relatively well and I'm just gonna take that beauty blender and really bounce that product into my skin. I'm just taking it. Now whatever your preference is, whether it be application with your hands, with a brush, with a beauty blender, one of those little silicone applicators, which I've never used. Do any of y'all use those? Make sure you bring it down. Just make sure you're doing an even application make sure you're taking it towards your ear if it doesn't match you perfectly then you might want to tap 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 over your ear now this is my summertime shade that I typically wear because I'm in between shades right now so this may not perfectly match always go up on the neck so this may not 100% match right now, but once I do all of my other stuff to my face, it typically it matches pretty well after I do concealer and everything else. Okay. Let's see if I can bring you guys in. Just bounce that. See, it covers that redness that I get right there. Okay, and now that that's all blended in, I got too much product and it's running down the back of my hand. I'll wipe that off. Now the next thing that we're going to do is take our concealer. This is just the Age Rewind Concealer. I'm sure you've heard of it because so many people use it. This is the shade Light. And the only thing I don't like about it is the little applicator. On my last one, I actually cut that little microfiber tip off but it was kind of hard to use after that so I didn't do it again. I really like the coverage of this and so I like to just take this well, I don't always do this but half the time I do so I'm showing you what I do. I just like to take it on the high parts of my face. I like to go over my eyelid with that also. Just like that and take the tip end of the beauty blender is what I typically use for my, con my, what? my concealer <laughs> my concealer I tried to say contour and concealer I guess and if you have redness like I do whatever product you have under here I just kinda take it whatever's left on there I don't really want to apply it there because it'll get dry because it's a dry area for me but I just do like that with it all right, and another good concealer, but it's a higher end one, is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. It's a very good concealer. Um, it's just too pricey. Now at this point, you can go one of two or three ways. You can spray your face with like Fix Plus or a setting spray, or you can powder. This is just the Laura Mercier powder, which is a good one that I like to use. Um, I'm not going to use it today because I don't always set my under eye, so I don't. I don't feel like I need it today. Yeah, I'm just I'm not gonna worry about that today. And so we're just gonna leave it as is, but this is a really good finely milled one. You want one that's very fine. You don't want to use regular face powder on your eye because it can really I have a pet hair in my eye or something. 
one of my animals <laughs> um but you definitely want to you know use something that's really finely milled like that and now i don't think i've got anything with me so from here is where i would do brows um my favorite brows that i would recommend would be the it cosmetics brow power pencil again it's pretty high priced um I'm trying to think of the drugstore brand I used before that. No, it wasn't a drugstore brand. It was a Ben Nye pencil, but it was pretty cheap. But I think I think the website's kind of expensive with shipping, if I remember correctly. But they had some good eye pencils that I liked, but they were just in the wooden, um, the wooden brow pencils. They weren't like a twist up or whatever. And the Benefit Goof Proof brow pencil is good. And what is the other one? The Cella. It's like a pomade powder. Um, is a good one. So today I'm going to show you the Cabral from Benefit. This is in the shade 2. This is actually a little light for me right now. And you're like, right now, do your brows change shades? Actually, they do. <laughs> in the summertime, as I'm out in the sun, my hair bleaches significantly. It really lightens up. So my eyebrow hairs actually lighten up pretty significantly so this is what the cabral looks like it's a pomade inside and in this little cap you take the brush out of it and you can either use it like this or you can snap it into that and use it like this and so i'm not really gonna fill my brows right now i'm just gonna show you guys let me see if i'm gonna zoom in i'm just gonna show you guys how i would so you take some of the product like that and then you're gonna wipe some of it off on the side and you're gonna like right here let me turn this up I don't, I'm gonna take it out of that okay you use some hair like flicking motions right here in the beginning and don't worry where it looks harsh right there because we're just gonna go back and use our spoolie and I'll lay the brush flat and kinda take it like that I hope these turn out good because I haven't used this little uh, viewfinder on the camera to do my eyebrows before. It's harder than I thought it would be. So I'm just doing little motions like this to really fill in my brows. I do have a lot of my brow left from the years of overplucking I did. But I still have lots of blonde hairs that come through them. I have lots of like sparse areas. I'm gonna take. I'm not dipping back in until I need it because you would just end up putting too much product on. Flicking upward. just like that and see the difference just between this one and this one it's just a little more filled in I'm gonna take some product and my eyebrows are definitely not identical the shape of them has never been identical before I ever touched them with tweezers or wax they were always a different shape than one another so I have to work kind of hard to get them the same shape as each other. They say eyebrows are supposed to be sisters, not twins or something like that. Well, mine are cousins. <laughs> mine aren't even twins or cousins or, no, they're cousins, they're not twins. I get caught up in my words. accidentally did a little too much but that's the good thing about this pomade before it dries you can actually move it around a little bit if you need to taking that brush to the side and doing like that let's see trying to take a look back I think those are fine. I'm not trying to do like a really kind of brow. I just want it to be even. <laughs> All right, let me take you guys back. Let's 
And so this pretty much catches you guys up. This is this was just an Aesthetica is the brand brush. It's just a spoolie, but a lot of them come with spoolies on the opposite end of them. I still have a pet. I guess it's a dog hair that's in my eyelash. <laughs> um, but this is pretty much what I would do before I would move on to contouring and blush and then, you know, my eyeshadow, rest of my face, what you guys typically see. So I'm not going to contour and blush today just because you guys see that whenever I do it most times when I do a video. But this is it. This is all I really do before I move on to the makeup application process for the rest that I show you guys. And I hope you guys found this video helpful and informative. And if you had any questions, just let me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel. I put out videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And go check out my Instagram. It's Amy Yevan Beauty. The description box will have all that information. It's A M Y Y V A N B E A U T Y. And I post looks on there every day. You guys can go check that out. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!